Your work sounds interesting, Francesca said. She felt a need to keep neutral conversation going. It is. I like it a lot. I like the road and I like making pictures. She noticed he'd said making pictures. You make pictures, not take them? Yes. At least that's how I think of it. That's the difference between Sunday snapshooters and someone who does it for a living. When I'm finished with that bridge we saw today, it won't look quite like you expect. I'll have made it into something of my own by lens choice or camera angle or general composition and most likely by some combination of all of those. I don't just take things as given. I try to make them into something that reflects my personal consciousness, my spirit. I try to find the poetry in the image. The magazine has its own style and demands. And I don't always agree with the editor's taste. In fact, most of the time I don't. And that bothers them, even though they decide what goes in and what gets left out. I guess they know their readership, but I wish they'd take few more chances now and then. I tell them that and it bothers them. That's the problem in earning a living through an art form. You are always dealing with marketers and marketers, mass marketers, are designed to suit average tastes. That's where the numbers are. That's the reality, I guess. But as I said, it can become pretty confining. They let me keep the shots they don't use. So at least I have my own private files of stuff I like. And once in a while, another magazine will take one or two, or I can write an article on a place I've been and illustrated with something a little more daring than National Geographic prefers. Sometime I'm going to do an essay called The Virtues of Amateurism for all of those people who wish they earned their living in the arts. The market kills more artistic passion than anything else. It's a world of safety out there for most people. They want safety, the magazines and manufacturers give them safety, give them homogeneity, give them familiar and comfortable, don't challenge them. Profit and subscriptions and the rest of that stuff dominate art. We are all getting lashed to the great wheel of uniformity. The marketing people are always talking about something called consumers. I have this image of a fat little man in baggy Bermuda shorts and Hawaiian shirt and a straw hat with beer can openers dangling from it, clutching fistfuls of dollars. Francesca laughed quietly, thinking about safety and comfort. But I'm not complaining too much. Like I said, the traveling is good and I like fooling with cameras and being out of doors. The reality is not exactly what the song started out to be, but it's not a bad song. Francesca supposed that for Robert Kincaid, this was everyday talk. For her, it was the stuff of literature. People in Madison County didn't talk this way about these things. The talk was about weather and farm prices and new babies and funerals and government programs and athletic teams. Not about art and dreams. Not about realities 
that kept the music silent. The dreams in a box. He finished chopping the vegetables. Anything else I can do? I hope you have enjoyed that and that you will capture the inspiration that came from that. I think that Robert James Waller is an excellent writer and he captured in this book a lot more than what people take it to be. Just by watching a movie perhaps you saw a romantic story in there but his skillful use of words has impressed me so much when I first read the book and I'm so glad I read the book way before I even knew there was a movie with my favorite actors in it and they did a great job by the way but that's not the point they did that by taking the inspiration from this book what will you do?